It's the first day of school. Uh, Chillin Dillon is a substitute school teacher. Uh, he's not in the school teaching today. He's here with us producing. So, Dylan, if you get a chance, put your ears on, and we'll uh, start off our new school year with our local teacher in in uh, in waiting here. Because I think Dylan, what do you do Thursday and Friday during the school year? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? How's it? Yeah, w- Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Is there anything different this year? Have you have you gotten your information? Do they send you a, a package every year to start the school year? Um, not that I've seen, but. Uh, maybe it's just that's an oversight on my part, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I'm pretty much prepared as, as far as I know. I also, I, I live with another teacher, so uh, uh, I kind of get the, the updates that way. All right. So I, I'm looking forward to it. It should be an interesting year. We'll see how the uh, how the cell phone stuff goes. Yeah. What do you teach, Dylan? Uh, I'll do I do whatever, basically. So substitute teaching a lot of times is basically the teacher will lay out a plan for you, and it's a lot of times it's you don't really need to know the subject matter too well to be able to but substitute. Does, does it extend from, say, first grade or kindergarten all the way up to senior? or It's definitely different substituting for kindergarten versus, you know, 12th grade. I've done both, but uh, it's definitely a different uh, kind of teaching either way. A lot of times the, it's, there's more of a babysitting aspect to, to an elementary school substituting. Yeah. I guess my point is uh, – uh, on a given week or given, yeah, given week, can you go from babysitting or substitute teaching uh, kindergarten to substitute teaching for senior all within a week's time? I can. Yeah, any, yeah. any day of the week. It, you know, the, the, the Berkeley County uh, substitute system has a, a website that lays out every, every absence for the day. So I could pick, oh, you know, Eagle School Intermediate or Musselman High School or and just go through. And I see the the subjects, I I see the grade, I see the teacher. How about for a longer-term planned absence for maternity leave or something like that? Would you be in the slot to take over a classroom for, say, months at a time? You could be. Uh, I believe there's uh, once you pass 10 consecutive days in the same classroom, you're considered a long-term sub, which includes, like, a bump up in pay. And I'm sure, you know, a, a principal to school would be more involved in that sort of thing where they're, they're giving you plans. I, I've substituted for a position like that, but not full time, but it, it was a position where the teacher was gone and they, they would have needed a permanent sub at some point. But in the meantime, I was doing it when I could. And the, the principal was very involved in that sort of planning for the, for what the kids were going to be doing. What is your preference, Dylan? If you had to choose or you do choose, what is your preference? Uh, I prefer the, to sub with at the high schools. It's just they're they're all a, all the students are a particular kind of mischievous. I guess you could say there's there's a different kind of uh, curve for how to uh, deal with behavior at certain levels. I prefer the high school level where it's a little more chill. I guess you could say where it's it's more about you know getting on them to do their work versus you know getting them to stay in their chairs. <laughs> well, that's good to know, though. Yeah. Right? So what are your options? Have you had a situation in a classroom where a kid needs to be physically restrained or moved? Have you had fights in the classroom or anything? I haven't, but I, I've heard about uh, those kind of situations. That's good early. that you haven't, though. How many years have you been subbing? I think at this point probably have gotten through three school years, I think. That's, so you th- three days a week, three years? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I'd, I'd say it, it was at least three days a week. Yeah. That's pretty good. Now, Dylan, in all honesty, which is more challenging? Baby, and I'm using the word babysitting in kind of a very loose way. <laughs> babysitting some of the kids there or babysitting Rob here in the studio? <laughs> yeah, which is uh, which is easier? Oh, Rob's got to be is way easier. You know? and, and I'm entertaining, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, the kids are entertaining, too, so, you know, from time to time. But. Yeah. <laughs> So to, to, you print as fairly young to me. Of course, most people do. 26? Uh, yes. So 26. does your youth play to your favor or against you? Because you're, you're, you know, you're not 10 years older, but you're seven or eight years older than, than the oldest kid in the classroom. Does that play to the benefit or to detriment, do you think, for you? I think it does. I think it plays uh, like to my, to my benefit. I think it makes the kids a little more likely to respect me i guess if they know that i can kind of relate to them I, I i think i think especially once you get to middle school and high school i think the 
that students are a little more likely to just kind of cast off a teacher when they're when they're older as opposed to younger but some of some of them are going to cast off any teacher at all sure but i remember back in your school days whoever the youngest teacher was in the school you generally took I don't know, a different Good approach advantage. or different area. I would agree. I don't think, I don't, I wasn't going there, Bill, but I, I was thinking like the youngest teachers in the school, I think you kind of identified with a little bit more as someone who might understand you more than if you had an older teacher. That's, you know, more out of, more out of touch. You know, let's face it, the further you get away from your teen years, the more removed you are from having a clue what it was like to be a teenager. Right? Right. Yeah, for sure. Right? I mean, Dylan's 26, I'm 61, you're 84, you're 67, 68, right. John, right? Our memories of our teen years get more distant every single day. <laughs> Dylan's not that far removed from being a senior in high school. And, you, and when you're a student, you pick up on that. You know, I had some teachers who were older who, when I was 16, I just thought didn't have a clue about anything. It's funny you mentioned that because I've, I, Mr. Garwood, eighth grade, Introductory Physical Science, IPS. I don't know if that's still a course is taught or not. He was young. He was just out of, he was saving up money to go to dental school. I know that. So he was, I don't know, in his 20s, I guess. And it was a fascinating class. He was, but I remember he would do things like, instead of standing in front of the classroom and teaching, he would sit on his desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the vernacular he would use to, to teach, he'd right. be very funny. And it was, so it's interesting you mentioned that. I hadn't thought of Mr. Garwood in years, but. You're right. There's there's a connection, I think, with younger younger teachers to younger students. Yeah, you. I use the word uh, uh, to take advantage of earlier, and that was my memory of young teachers when I was in well, school. You guys were all hooligans back then. We right? were hooligans, and and you say we after a few years we've uh, we tend to forget certain aspects. It's very selective. <laughs> some <laughs> sure. some stuff I forget is I've long since forgotten. We'll probably never yeah. recall. But there's certain incidents such as taking advantage of young teachers is uh, I vividly remember. I remember we had a the shop teacher. He he went to Woodstock. He, you know, as a as a younger. Person. I think he was probably only in his late 20s at that time when he was teaching us in high school or early 30s. But I remember him telling us that he was at Woodstock. This, this would have been probably 79, 80, somewhere around there. And when you're 16 or 17 and someone says, you were at Woodstock? And my friend Bill Bliss, I'll never forget this. He, his first question, of all the questions you could ask somebody who went to Woodstock, he goes, where did you park? <laughs> <laughs> Like, tell me about Jimi Hendrix, right? No, it was, where did you park? That, I would have had the same sort of questions. I, I can definitely remember a middle schooler one. This is a little uh, different than going to Woodstock, but I remember a middle schooler asking me maybe a couple of years ago, do you know what Minecraft is? And I was like, I played Minecraft. Yeah. And they were like, you play, you play Minecraft? Sure. <laughs> and so it, I think if you can identify, or like you said, he sat on his desk, that was totally different, or – just some of the words that a younger teacher uses, I think it helps in the classroom when you have that kind of identification with your students. Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh -huh. it, it's, I don't know if, it, if it's just a respect thing or if it's just you're more willing to learn from them or what, whatever, it ha whatever it is, but uh, I can see that. Yeah. Dylan, what does your crystal ball project out to be the, the encounters with the cell phone policy? Oh, I'm sure it'll be difficult. I mean, the students were already not supposed to be having their phones out in the classroom during class time, and that, that was already an issue. So uh, I think for for most schools, at least the ones that I've been at, they already had some sort of policy in place where I, I think that the main change would be between classes. You're not allowed to have your phone out, like, in the hallways versus, you know, you get uh, – that's the only time, you know, once you're in class, most the average teacher is going to say, all right, you should have your phone away anyway. But between classes, out in the hallways, that, that'll probably be difficult. And then you'll have the same sort of struggles for kids wanting to be on their phones in class, putting their laptops up on their desk and putting their phone up on the laptop screen as if no teacher has ever seen that done before, as if, you know, when you can t you can tell that a kid has their finger all the way up to the laptop screen, and you're like, your laptop's not a touch screen. What's your what's your, ha what's your hand doing up there? As it, and and even sometimes there may, might be like two teachers in the classroom, one in the front, one in the back, and the kids somehow forget 
about the teacher or teacher's aide or whatever uh, it might be in the back of the classroom. And I've had encounter, encountered that before where I'm sitting in as a teacher's aide for the day, substituting for one of the, one of those teachers that kind of bounce from classroom to classroom and kids just, you know, doing that thing, setting, setting their phone up against the laptop and be like, you know, back here in the back, I can see you. <laughs> and like, like just even if it's, you know, I'd rather just like, hey, look at look at the, the main teacher uh, of the classroom and be like, hey, um, yeah, this point out the, the student using their, their phone. Like a lot of times the kids just d- don't <laughs> don't pay, uh, listen to that policy at all. Or they'd be like, I'm text. I'm texting my mom. I'm te- I need to I need to get this text off or, you know, kind of thing. And it takes them like five. Uh, three to five minutes of convincing to actually put the phone away sometimes. Bill, you're getting beaten up on Facebook for the word babysitting. I noticed that. And I was trying <laughs> to decide whether, whether I deserve uh, the blame or Dylan. One of the two of us, we both used it probably very inappropriately. So, uh, uh, yeah. I think I think you were talking about it as a substitute going in for a day in a classroom where you're not the main yeah. teacher looking at it that way. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that you intended to insult teachers which is the way it's being taken on our facebook well classes. only one or two folks that are trying to be uh uh hit dumping on us this morning having That's not a- looked at the string <laughs> i bet i can guess who they are i use that term yeah. because a lot of times when, when as a substitute when you go into the classroom yeah. The, the agenda for the day is given to you. The teacher who is in the classroom normally is. Well, a lot of times it's a worksheet or maybe it's uh, an online assignment on, on Schoology where they say, this is what the kids are going to be doing today. This is what you should have them do. Yeah. So it's a lot of times it's go up to the front of the room at the beginning of class, say, this is what your teacher left for you to do today. I'm either going to pass it out or everybody gets their laptops uh, open and does their assignment. And then from there, you know, I just kind of used the word babysitting as you know just kind of a catch-all as the most Dylan, relatable term as not, i watch them do the go ahead Dylan, let's go not ahead. take the heat off bill so quickly here Dylan, let's go back to how no, bill inappropriately yeah, accused all teachers of being lazy and never working a day in their Dylan, lives Dylan, you're handling this quite well just go right ahead <laughs> No, I'll dip out. You go ahead, Bill. <laughs> no, that's okay, Dylan. You go ahead. This was clearly Bill's fault. Let's not gloss over that too much, too quickly. So, here. Dylan, I, w- I want to talk a little bit about the, the laptops. Do they double now as textbooks? Where I used to be told, open your text to page to chapter 13. Now it's open your it, open the, the document on your laptop to whatever. Is, is that what's happening now is that what the laptops are about it, it can depend on the teacher it's, it, themselves a lot of classrooms will have textbooks still but a lot of times the the same work the same text will be online somewhere for the kids to be able to to have and a lot of times it's easier for the assignment at the very least to be online so that it makes it easier to grade like it's very easy to, to grade a multiple choice assessment if it's online because the teacher doesn't even have to look, go through it. The, the, the system, the computer automatically knows what the right answer was and whether you put it down or not. So uh, that's, that's sort of how it goes. It's definitely a lot more stuff used on the computer because I think it, it's easier for the teachers too. A lot of times they don't have to, the, there's not so much paper they have to run through and, and, and keep to themselves and collect. It's, it's easier to just pull up a computer and look at everything, click by, you know, we're going to open this student's profile or whatever. Berkeley County Schools now in excess of 20,000 students for the first time. And a uh, couple things here. Uh, school buses on the road. Don't pass a stop school bus. And that includes if you're on the other side of the street, uh, if there aren't hard barriers between, say, northbound and southbound or westbound and uh, eastbound. You know, Jersey barriers in between the lanes blocking any type of crossing, then yes, you can go. But... Uh, even a broken, divided highway, you have to stop uh, when a school bus stops. And you should definitely not pass a school bus when it's in front of you, uh, especially if it's, uh, I mean, when it's stopped, we're talking about here. And, Rob, I'm curious why we're having this freewheeling discussion this morning as opposed to a more disciplined uh, guest, which they did not show up. Thank you for revealing that yeah. to everybody, Bill. Uh, <laughs> well, I think it's quite obvious. <laughs> no, Dylan was the scheduled guest on the program this morning. No, Chase Oliver, the president of the Libertarian Par- nominee of the Libertarian Party, no showed us here this morning. I'm not sure why. We'll get to that later. However, on Wednesday, 
Lisa Henry from the Backpack Program will be here. We're going to help raise some money for the Backpack Program on Wednesday. And the way we're going to do that is I have four tickets in my hand right here to the West Virginia Penn State football mm -hmm. game, right? Four of them. We're going to auction these off to the highest bidder during Lisa's appearance here Wednesday morning. All the money is going to go to the Backpack Program. I am told that these seats can go for in excess, in excess, Bill, of $300 per seat. These are, I'll tell you the section right now, 103. Which stadium? Row 41. Milan Puskar, West Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Uh, row 41 seats 110 through 113. Highest bidder will get the four seats. They go as a package of four, and that's uh, on uh, Wednesday morning. So we expect to hand over a nice big chunk of money to the backpack program for this because they do such great work in our community, helping to send food home for kids who don't uh, have it at their houses, even over the weekends, too, and holidays. And Lisa Henry and that group have been doing that work around here for I think about 10, 12 years to, that we've been having her on the show talking about it. Can people start bidding now? They can. Are you going to put in the bid, John? Football is my life. <laughs> <laughs> We all, we all know that. We're all quite aware of that. Uh, speaking of the backpack program, Dylan, as a substitute teacher, are you made aware of that uh, sort of thing at all as to what kids need to get uh, food in their backpacks and whatever? Is that, uh, is that mostly for the younger ones? I'd say it's uh, more so for the, for the younger ones. I stay usually in the middle school and the high school. Uh, a lot of times, substitute teaching, I kind of feel like I'm a, I'm a pitcher being brought out of the bullpen. So I might not. You know, be broad. It, be careful in, now. You you may have just insulted <laughs> teachers again. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, a, a lot of times I'm not brought up to date on the th the overarching things going on in the county or even the school. A lot of times it's I like, come in. Hey, you're in this classroom. Maybe you're in two classrooms. Maybe you're in five classrooms today. This is this is what you worry about basically. I'm when it comes to actual removal of a student from a classroom. I'm going to guess that that's not on the teacher to be the bouncer, so to speak. How does that work? If you got a you got a kid that's got to go, what is your what's the protocol? Uh, if they if they aren't willing to if they don't go willingly, it's usually you know get a get an administrator down. And mm -hmm. if they I've never encountered a situation where a student physically said no, I'm not going anywhere, and needed to be taken somewhere. But I imagine if it got to a certain point where they wouldn't. You know, they wouldn't listen to a teacher telling them go, go to the office. If they wouldn't listen to an administrator go to the office, uh, you would get you know some sort of higher authority uh, involved at that point if they're just being that stubborn. But that's that's a pretty extreme situation that I don't think would happen very often. It was not unusual in our youth for the teacher to also be the bouncer, <laughs> just grab you by the <laughs> the neck, the shirt, whatever, and. Out you go. They'd haul you down to the principal's office or out into the hallway and uh, whatever. But I know it's uh, it's not as common now. Not I remember likely. being asked to move my desk out into the hallway and do my work out in the Probably hallway. Probably daily for, a while. for you, Gilstrap. Uh, not daily, but because you you were a wisecracker from what I, I understand. was. I was. Yeah, Bill was more disciplined. Did well, you ever get kicked out of class, never. Bill? Yeah, going. Uh, we were never. The principal never came came to get us. The teacher never carried us to the principal's office. We were told to go to the principal's office, and we would do it from the first grade all the way to high school. Sure. If the teacher told us to go to the principal's office, we never questioned. That's what we did. You never had any kids who refused to do it? No, I don't, not to my memory. But, again, selective memory, Rob. Selective memory. Did everyone always return after they went to the principal's office? No, that was a black hole. You don't know. <laughs> kids rarely return. Out.